welcome to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara from allbrands.com. I'm so happy to be here with you today. We have a little change of plans, but I'm so excited because guess who stepped in and is going to be doing the live with us today? Courtney Douthit from All Brands After Hours showing us the scan and cut machine. I love it. And thank you, Courtney, for stepping in. So we are going to be doing a giveaway. Um, it's going to be a little different. So we're talking about cutting fabric. Um, so the giveaway today is going to be for the fabric mat. So to be eligible for that, please comment hashtag all brands in the comment section to be eligible to win. And we will announce the winner at the end of the broadcast. Also, I wanted to say, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone who attended um, EEM this past weekend. That was Everything Embroidery Market in Lafayette, Louisiana. We had tons of fun. It was all about embroidery and scan and cut. And so now we're closing the chapter on, on that show and planning our next show, which is going to be 10 times as big. Um, so many more classes and stuff to do and things to shop. Um, that one is called Original Sewing and Quilting Expo. That is in Kenner, Louisiana, May 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Pontchartrain Center. We'll have classes, shopping, they'll have fashion shows, presentations, trunk shows, make it, take it, and so much more. So please be sure to come and see us there. We'd love to meet you and have fun sewing, quilting, and embroidering. All right, without further ado, I'm going to bring in our awesome guest, Courtney Douthit, and here she is. Hey! Hi. <laughs> We're so happy you're here. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I love this. Yay! Everyone is saying hey. They love you. Everyone loves the All Branch show, but they also love, I was going to say your show, <laughs> everyone loves All Brands After Hours. Awesome. Um, and if you guys haven't followed Courtney yet, please subscribe on our YouTube channel at All Brands 1976. Courtney does a show after after work is done, right, Courtney? Yeah, well, we know why. If you came to EEM, uh, you know why this is called After Hours. Um, because if it's After Hours, if the owner of All Brands sees something that he didn't like that I said, well, sir, it was After Hours. You can't blame me for that. <laughs> um, speaking of EEM, thank you to everyone that came to EEM. I did a class and did some main stage demos, uh, and it was really great to finally get to see people in person and answer your questions. And, um, I had a few people who were like, come over here and pick out the things off the rack that I need for my machine. And I was like, okay, great. Um, but we had a lot, a lot of fun, some great information. Um, but I will be at the show coming up with, was that OSQE? Mm -hmm. um, I will be at that show as well. So definitely come out and say hi and have some fun with the scan and cut. Yay. Oh, we're excited. So today we're going to be cutting fabric on the scan and cut. Oh my goodness. Let yeah. us know in the comments. Have you ever cut fabric on your scan and cut? So there's a lot to learn, right? Yes, there is. And we did a, uh, a video on this on All Brands After Hours where we went through the uh, fabric and how to cut it. But the thing with that show is it is pre-recorded, so you can't ask me your questions. So that's what I love about the All Brands show. It's live. You can ask me the questions that pop into your head right now, and you get an immediate response. So let's jump into it. I always get uh, questions that are like, Courtney, I bought my scan and cut because I wanted to cut out applique, because I wanted to cut out this or that. Um, and then they get scared. They get nervous. You get your machine. You're like, what blade? What mat? So I'll give you my tips and tricks how I do it, um, how I cut out appliques and the different things about fabric. So starting with that is mat. So the mat, which I heard Barbara's giving out or giving one away today, which was kind of awesome. Can I have it? No. OK. Um, <laughs> so y'all comment hashtag all brands if you want to get in the chance to win this mat. And, and ask have one, too. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the uh, tan, sometimes they call it gold. I call it uh, gold come fancy, but the tan mat is going to be your best friend with cutting out fabric. Uh, why? Because there's different mats. And if you've seen, we've done like scan and cut one on one where we've gone over all the different mats and blades, but your tan mat is going to be your most sticky mat. Well, if I've got fabric that I want to put on here, I want my most sticky mat. That way I get less shifting. 
There's nothing moving. It's holding it down so I can get a good cut. So if you're cutting out fabrics and you have fabric and you have an SDX model, then you're going to want to get your uh, tan mat. If you have a CM model, so this was pre-auto blade. If you have numbers on your blade, you're going to want to get your, your standard mat and put on what's called a high tax support sheet. So you're going, it just comes in a roll. You're going to put that on there and that's going to make it super, super sticky. But the thing with that is once you cut through it a lot, it's going to start coming off and wearing off. And then you're going to have to take it off and put a new one on there. But if you have an SDX model, you can just use your tan uh, mat and it's, it's wonderful. It cuts all that out. So tan mat for the win. Um, and brother got smart. I like to give them a hard time, but this I actually like. They color coded this. So you're going to go for tan blade and tan mat together. That's gonna to be your bread and butter. Um, so this one I use for my cotton material, anything like that, just regular cotton material. These are like my fabric scissors. So if you notice, a lot of times you'll have your black blade and then you'll have your tan blade. So think fabric scissors, everything else. If I'll hurt someone if they use these, it's okay, but I'm not thrilled. So <laughs> just fabric scissors and everything like that. So that's how you kind of differentiate these. Am I cutting out fabric? Well, yes, I'll use my fabric scissors. Now, the new girl on the block and my personal favorite, not that you're supposed to have favorite, you know, kids, but this is my favorite, is the new rotary blade. I love this blade, but I feel like a lot of times people don't, ex people don't explain what this blade is and then they feel like it's not working correct. So you have these different ones. But when would I use this girl? If you notice, she's a little different than this one. And actually, let me switch cameras so you guys can see it a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so if you look at this blade here, this is your tan blade. If you press down, oops, let's see, press down, let's see if I can get her to do it. There we go. A little bitty blade comes out, which is great. But this one looks like a rotary blade. I like how I just press something on the screen. That is that one, a pizza cutter? Rotary blade. <laughs> what that one is made for, and I'll switch back so you can see me. There we go. What that one is made for is specialty fabrics. So they were thinking silk, chiffon, lace to go through there. But what I use mine the most is wool, felt, cork, things that I consider a trickier fabric, especially like a wool. You might not get a close weave. You might get one that's a little bit open. Well, before an open weave, there was no way you were going to be able to cut that. But now with the specialty blade, that's what it's made for. Your regular blade, it's going to go and it's going to cut around and it's going to do great. This one is going to hop, which really, really scares people when they see it. It's going to hop around because what it's doing is thinking, OK, if I come here and cut, I'll get the crispest, nicest cut. And it actually cuts a little on the angle. It'll get you the best cut where I'm shifting this fabric as little as possible. So she takes a few minutes longer to cut than this one, a few seconds longer to cut than this one, but it's because she's hopping around trying to find you the best cut. Now, I've heard things that people are like, oh, well, you only can get this one in the 330. And that's true. You can get this in the 330. It comes with it. It comes with these two blades, but it's available in a kit separately. And you know how I am if you watch my shows about kits. I'm always like, learn your machine before you get a kit. This one's pretty cool. I actually really like this one. So if you're doing a lot of fabric and you have a 225 uh, or a um, 230 or a 325, you can get this one in a kit separately. So you can still get it and it will still work for your machine. Now, it only works for SDX model, and I'm not sure about the rest of them. I don't believe it does, but I know it works in those machines. So you can get it separately for your machine if you like it and you know you're going to do a lot of fabric. It's a good one to invest in. So those are going to be your girls. If you're cutting fabric, you're either going to do it with this one or this one. She does a great, a great job on just regular cotton material. But if I'm going to do something where I probably shouldn't be putting it in my machine or I just want to see if it's going to work, then I go for this girl. So that's the difference between the blades. Oh, that's a question I get a ton. So I always like to go over that. Alrighty. So, oh, another thing about this blade. This is why I do pre-recorded because I'll just keep going with information. Another thing about this machine or this blade is that it will do one millimeter at a time. Your scan and cut can cut up to a three millimeter. So this blade right here, the tan one, she's going to automatically sense how deep that material is and only cut that material. And you can do up to a three millimeter. So think like a puffy foam or a good quality cork or felt or something like that. They're pretty chunky. So she can do that. 
She's only going to do a th one millimeter at a time, but you can run it up to three times. If you're running it more than three times, you shouldn't be putting that material in your in your machine because if it's thicker than a three millimeter, you shouldn't be doing that. But um, so you might have to run her two times. I've never run, had to run her more than two times, and I was going through a thick leather. Um, yes, leather is a lot of fun. So you would only have to do that, but it's because she's going around. She has the te technology to find the best cut. So works really great. So if you notice, oh, it didn't cut through all the way. That's just because it's a thick fabric. Run it one more time. You should be good to go. All righty. So hey, I feel like I'm just information at you. <laughs> hey, Courtney, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, we had a few questions that came in specifically okay. that I think um, would be a good chance to answer right now. Um, Miss Flores says, which one would you use for denim fabric? Uh, probably the rotary blade. Yeah, probably. Okay. Denim. And would yeah. you treat the denim fabric or? Do okay, anything? so let's go over treated fabric. Because a lot of times people were telling me they want to cut out appliques. And they're like, oh, should I cut it before I treat it? No, treat it. Go ahead. You don't have to treat fabric. You can do 100% cotton fabric. Just no treat it at all. Cut it out on the machine. The machine's going to cut it like butter. Um, the machine doesn't know. The machine knows, do you want me to go through all of this or do you want me to go through some of this? So if you were doing vinyl, like a half cut. Um, so like this right here, it's just a regular piece of cotton fabric. Nothing special about it. And it cut it great. This one right here was treated with Tyrol Magic. So if you notice, like it's standing up on its own, it's treated with Tyrol Magic. But if you know Tyrol Magic, it's, it's like a starch. And if you wash it, it just washes out. Um, I like Tyrol Magic. I think it's great. So it cut it out beautifully. This one right here, I cut out and it's actually been in my car. So that's why it's kind of <laughs> this one right here. I cut out with heat and bond light on it. Um, and it cut out again beautifully. The machine doesn't know what it's cutting out. But if you are treating your fabric, what I always recommend is get your fabric mat, take your fabric, like uh, heat and bond light has that paper, paper backing to it. So you're going to treat your fabric. You're going to take it. Say, let's let's do a bigger piece. Say it's this one. So I have my paper backing on one side. I have my uh, fabric on this side. I'm going to do fabric side down on my mat. And then that way my paper side's up. Why do we want to do that? Well, you don't want to put paper to this fabric mat because you're going to be picking off paper for quite a while. So we want fabric side up. I'm sorry, fabric side down, paper side up. Because if something happens to that paper, I don't care. I'd rather be worried about my fabric. Um, so that way your fabric's getting that real sticky good mat and holding on as tight as it can. And then you can cut out, you know, together. Because that just saves you a step than having to cut out your fabric. Then cut out your your uh, whatever you're treating it with, you know, might as well just do it all at once. But fabric side down on your fabric mat. Can you still use your fabric uh, blades? Yes, because I know people are like, well, there's paper on it. It's totally fine. Just just go ahead and do it. It's, it's totally fine. You, if you want to dedicate one of them to be your treated fabric blade, that's between you and your blade. But if you, I, I just I go ahead and do it. it it's not going to hurt anything. Um, so, oh yes. my gosh. Thank you, Courtney. We're getting a ton of questions in here. Okay. I hope you don't mind. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Just tell me when you're done answering questions. But um, okay, what about leather? We have that. Uh, so Lori this Scott right has. here, this right here was a cork, and if you know, corks like a fabric. It's similar to leather. Leather's a little bit uh, thicker. The machine doesn't mind what it's cutting. It will it will cut out anything. Um, the hardness scale. I mean, I've done thin balsam wood. I've done all sorts of things on my machine. It matters the thickness. Um, I'm sure if you put like steel in there, maybe it will give you a little hesitation, but it, it does, it does leather like butter. Oh my gosh. It does so well, especially a thick leather. I get a lot of questions of, wait, I have a really thick leather. How is it going to cut it? Well, it cuts it multiple times. So if you've done it with this blade, what it's going to do is it's going to cut and then it's going to come back and cut again and lower it down. So then that way it's giving you a nice smooth cut. Instead of trying to shove that blade all the way through that material, that's when you get those weird little rivets and those, those weird, you know, cuts. It's because it's trying to push that blade all the way through. But to scan a cut, it's going to cut down and then cut down again if it's a nice thick fabric. So a leather, I've had it do that to me um, a few times and it was a beautiful smooth cut. So, okay. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. What about the, um, would you use the fabric mat with cork? 
someone asked. Yes. So when I cut out this cord, I used my fabric mat because I consider my fabric mat my most sticky mat. If it is a tough material, even if it's not fabric, I'm going to put it on that mat because in my head, I'm thinking, oh, this is my strongest mat. I want to make sure that this is stuck down to my mat to give me a um, good stick because if it's not, if it moves, well, that's when we get a bad cut. That's when something crazy happens and we chop something off. So I mm -hmm. want it to hold down to that material. So if you're doing leather, if you're doing uh, cork or something like that, that's the mat I would put on. When I do thin balsam wood, that's the mat I put it on because it's the most sticky. Now, if you are doing thin balsa wood, I'm sorry, I go on tangents. Um, don't feel weird about having to tape it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we uh, here's one more uh, from Rebecca. How would you prep and cut wool felt? Depends on what you're going to do with the wool felt. I've seen a lot of people do um, like a freezer paper on the back to kind of give I've it a done. little stability. Mm -hmm. Do what? I, I put two pieces of freezer paper together and I iron them and with the wool in between because it's got so much kind of fluffiness to it. Yes. Right. right. So she kind of, what Barbara's saying is she sandwiched it to try to make it stick together a little bit better because treating it with material magic, I just don't know how it's going to come out. Yeah. And since um, it's paper, you would put it on the paper mat, which is. Yeah, the, if you're going to sandwich it, you're going to have to put it on the paper mat or uh, the blue mat. It's the low tack mat. Low -tack. The mat we call it paper mat because that's the only thing <laughs> you want to put on it. I know. We're like, that call is it. paper mat. <laughs> Vinyl mat, paper mat, and fabric mat. <laughs> oh, yeah. We renamed them. <laughs> okay, yeah, so let's talk. We've had like four questions regarding flipping versus heat and bond on the back. So can you kind of go over that? And I think that that would answer oh. several. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they're talking about is flipping your design, which is so easy in skin because it's literally one button. Um, so think if we're flipping, so say we have our fabric. I'm a visual person here. Um, so say we had our fabric and it was treated on the bottom, which, you know what, it might be easier if I do this. This is, this is, uh, a stitch out but so okay so say this was our treated treated part and this is our fabric on the top which is fabric what i would do is fabric side down this side up but what if it was directional well i just flipped it but you could just flip it in your machine as well flip the design and then it doesn't matter so if say it was a name like my son alex's name well if i cut out alex like this it's going to be backwards so you just flip your design in the machine so if you're flipping your material remember flip inside my machine and then you're good to go. So questions, any, any and all. Let me, uh, okay. So that answered um, a few. One uh, watcher said that she took, she takes the heat and bond sticker mm -hmm. off of the back, mm -hmm. but she should still stick the fabric side down to the fabric mat, correct? Yeah, I would. And flip it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't put any kind of thing that might have like a residue because I mean, heat bond. You have to think. I mean, that's 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 glue. You know, it's it's some kind of glue. I don't want to put glue to my mat. I want yeah. something like a fabric uh, to go into my mat. So I would still put fabric side down because yeah. I mean, if you didn't treat it perfectly like me, um, if I didn't heat it on the back of that fabric, well, I might get some slippage. So fabric side yeah. on your fabric mat is going to be your best okay. One. Okay. Yeah, and I would stick to just fabric, paper, and vinyl on the mats and mm -hmm. not sticking the extra adhesives down to any of the yeah. adhesive of the mat. Yeah, because right? I mean, your mat stickiness is 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 what's making your machine work. I mean, well, the internal stuff too. But that, that I just don't want to mess with that if I can help it. Yeah. So Mary, I probably would, I would not suggest using 505 to help stick because the fabric mat's very sticky to begin with. So that brings up a question that I want to ask. How do you keep it sticky? Okay. So I wish I had some on me. Um, <laughs> I was here to sh shoot a different show and she was like, Hey, <laughs> I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Oh, you got it. Go, uh -huh. go, go. I'll keep them entertained. <laughs> so, um, a 505 spray, if you're not familiar with it, it's, it's just like a sticky spray. It, it, kind of helps if like um say I'm doing an applique and I don't want to treat it well I when I'm stitching out I don't want it to shift I would just get some 505 and you know spray it on there and make sure it didn't shift that's what I use it mostly for but putting it on your mat um when you're cleaning your mat over 
a long time of time, it, it might mess with the glue. What I personally recommend, uh, well, what, what brother recommends you to do, because remember, I'm all brands, I'm not brother. What, what brother recommends you do is to pick off every piece of lint off of your mat and then take an unscented baby wipe to wipe it down. What Courtney recommends you do is not that. Um, sorry, brother. Um, what I recommend is going to the Dollar Tree. You're going to get a thing called Totally Awesome, which Barbara's run to go get hers, which I'm really glad she had it. Um, you're going to go get a thing called Totally Awesome. It's a cleaner. I know some of you are like, excuse me. It, it's yellow. So you can get it for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree. It used to be a dollar, but don't get me started on that. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take your mat and you're going to take off the protective cover, you know, that clear cover. You're going to spray your mat down with Totally Awesome. You're going to take any kind of scraper tool that you have. Mine's you know, my scan and cut scraper tool. And you're going to push it around. You're not going to shove it. You're not scraping it real hard. You're just pushing it around to get all that gunk up. Just pushing it around and then you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to wipe it down, which is going to be scary because it's not going to be sticky anymore. Then you're going to leave it to dry. So perfectly flat, leave it to dry. I usually do a ton. So my whole desk is full of them. You're going to leave it to dry. Do not put that protective cover back on it because that is going to make a fume house. And then it, as it dries, it's going to bring back all of that sticky. Um, and this makes your mats last a lot, lot longer. Um, so that's that's what I recommend. Do not do 50-50% ratios. Do not do um, any kind of mixing. Oh, yeah. It's okay. It's heavily used. Heavily, heavily used. But apparently, I was told, look out for the gallon jugs to refill. Because that's, that's what I do. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it looks like when yeah, you use it. It's usually yellow. Barb's <laughs> is uh, empty. So... <laughs> It's in that bottle, but it's usually yellow. Um, so you're going to go full strength. Do not do 50-50% ratios because you'll mess with the stickiness on your mat. Get full strength, and it's going to clean your mat to make them really, really nice. I know it's scary the first time you do it, but trust me, it is awesome. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will take some more questions, and but you can move on to the next subject. I'm just here for, they never get to ask me during my show. Okay. They have to like leave a comment. I have a group of 12. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Go, um, go, go, go. Okay. If I use applique, but if applique, I use heat and bond stop spraying. Yes. So she's saying that she uses uh, a heat and bond because she doesn't want her fabric to fray. And yeah, it, it's kind of like the Tiro Magic. It's gonna make it a little stiffer. So then that way you don't have these little frayed ends on the end of your material. Yeah. Yeah. So so Zola Marie says, so if you remove the paper, paper backing, you can't put the heat and bond glossy sag down? Mm -mm. No. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I stick mean, glue to glue, right? Yeah, you can, but I, I would just be cautious and say no. Because, I mean, this is a very, very sticky. I mean, look, I can lift it up with my hand. It's a very sticky mat. Show, show them your little trick. <laughs> You're like, so whenever I hard. clean mats and I get impatient, I keep doing this. <laughs> because I want to know when it gets full stickiness. But I have a habit now of the protective, protective cover's not on. I'm always like, and then you're going to use this mat. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Bad habit. Put my hand on there. Bernadette said, "What's it called again? It's called LA's Totally Awesome, as seen on TV." <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, from the totally Dollar Tree. Awesome. Um, we don't sell it at all, brands, so and we make nothing from it. Um, but we always recommend it because it's a good product and it does really mm -hmm. well on your mats. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, glue paper scissors just says I have a rhinestone question. Yeah, totally. I haven't. I didn't see her question though. Can you kind of ex maybe explain how that works? Or yeah, I'm here to answer all the questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically, rhinestones. You get a rhinestone kit, mm -hmm. and it comes with like this felt sheet, and your scan and cut cuts out holes onto the felt. And then you pour the rhinestones over it. And then you take your transfer paper, put it over the rhinestones. And then you put that on your garment. And then the rhinestones have adhesive on the back. And then mm -hmm. you put it down. But there's a kit that you buy for rhinestones. Yeah. So it's perfect. Bar perfect. Uh, the only thing is you get this little brush inside the kit. And what you do is you brush on it. And it makes all the rhinestones flip the correct way, which is kind of fun. 
Um, and then that way, all of your rhinestones are facing up. So the shiny side up once you do your brushing. Um, and then that's when you take the transfer, they're all facing the correct way. So the adhesive side is up. And then you would put it on your garment, protective cover, like a piece of cotton material, heat it up. It's heating up that glue on the uh, back of those rhinestones. And then you peel the little clear part off and your rhinestones stay. So think you could add rhinestones in any shape, wherever you want. The most I've seen that people love to use that kit is when they want to make a rhinestone Mickey for when they're going to Disney World and they want a hidden Mickey somewhere or something like that, or they want to do their names in it. So I love the rhinestone kit. It's a lot of fun. Robin read my mind and I want to see this too, if you could. We yeah. want to talk about taking your machine embroidery and applique to the cutting yeah. machine, start to finish. Do you think yeah, you have I have a USB. Time? Yeah, let's do it. All right. All righty. So there's different ways to get a design into your machine. Now, she is a brother machine. So that means that she reads a PES format. She also reads an FCM format and an SVG format. But PES, Courtney, that's not a cut file. No, it's not. It's a brother's embroidery file. So everyone that has a brother machine is going, wait. <laughs> so what you can do is if you have an applique, um, you can get the, and if you don't have a brother machine, you could, you know, when you buy a design that gives you all the different formats, just, just grab the PES version. And then you can send it wirelessly to your scan and cut because she is wireless or wireless, or you can put it through the USB. So right here on the side, I don't know if you see it off camera, I have my USB that I put in there. And if let's switch camera so you can see a little bit better. No, the other one. There we go. So let's go home because I was playing around in it a minute ago. And we are going to come right here to the bottom to retrieve data. Where do we want to retrieve it from? Our machine, our USB, our computer. If you notice the little canvas icon right here, um, we can do it through a cord. And if my machine or if my computer is right here, I could do it through my computer. And Canvas is the free software that Brother gives you with your machine. And we'll go over, we'll talk a little bit about that later. All right, so I'm going to go for my USB. All right, so these are the things that are currently on my USB. If you notice at the top, this is an SVG file. So this was an SVG file that was already one that I bought separately. Well, down here, if you notice, it says PES. These are appliques. So if I was to select this one right here, here's my applique. And if, it, if the design that you bought came with a cut file, if you select this shield right here, it would give you that. So I know a lot of companies like uh, I think Embroidery Garden does it. Kimberbell's starting to do it. They give you a cut file. That's where you would find it. But what if they don't give you a cut file? Well, we're going to come right here to this little flower. OK, it's just saying, hey, what size do you want to do this? Now, I recommend if you are doing an applique, two bumps. You're going to go boop, boop. Because if you do that right now, she's going to cut directly on that line. Well, I want to make sure that my fabric catches, so I'm just going to bump it up two, bump it up one to make sure that it catches on there. It's just a little extra insurance. So we're going to hit OK. And now what she's giving you is the innards and outers. She's giving you just the line and she's giving you the stitch out. Now, I, for this particular one, want the outer bits because that little bunny tail that's in there, I could go and get that tail if I wanted to, but that part was just a stitch out. It wasn't part of an applique. So I'm gonna come here and select the outer bits and hit okay. And then again, size, we're gonna hit set. And now she's gonna go ahead and set that on my mat. All right, so there we go. I like that they gave me the fun button that I can click there. All right. So now we can go ahead and cut out our applique. How fast was that? It was kind of insane. It's literally creating the applique. Right. <laughs> um, so just one question real quick from Diana. She's asking if you bump it up with the height and the width. Maybe you can explain the purpose. So the scan and cut and wants to resize things as breathing. So all together, think all together, because it doesn't want to distort your image. So it's just coming all together. You can tell it, hey, lock one of those and only do my width or my height. I bump it up all together because I want every piece to make sure that it catches. So when I go bump, bump, that was all together. Because remember, your scan cut wants to automatically uh, size up like breathing. And I can show you how to lock one of them or the other just for future reference in a minute. So, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. When I, when I hit two, I might have only hit the height, but it's doing both of them. It's doing the height and the width together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> somebody asked, um, 
What do you mean by catches on there with the okay. satin stitch on the way? So the way. I actually have the stitch out version right here. So, <laughs> so what it's doing is like, if you see the little bunny right in the center and the little white part is the satin stitch that it caught or that it created. Well, whenever you're stitching out an applique, you know, it's going to do that first stitch that shows you where to put your um, fabric. And then it does that. You would put down your fabric and then it would um, do a stitch around. And then you would have to come in with applique scissors to cut around. And usually you're trying to do it in there or you're having to pull it out. And then you're worried about it lining up correctly. Once you put it back in, I hate doing that. And then once it's cut, so say, so yeah. Once it's cut, I have my other one right here. Um, it would come and do the satin stitch, which is that big chunky white part, the pretty satin stitch around it. So it would do that after that. If I make sure that I bump it up at least one or two, I'm going to make sure that it catches that uh, that satin stitch catches there. I'm not going to have any weird gaps in between my applique uh, because that the machine's taking from thin air the line that it needs to cut from the satin stitch or straight from the center of it. But I just, I like to give it that extra little assurance that it's going to catch and it's going to do it great. Because remember, this is directly right on the line. Um, so if I do it just a little bit bigger, not too big where it's going over that satin stitch, that's why I always say just one or two bumps. Um, and then it'll, it'll catch it on perfectly. Questions? Um, I think we can go go ahead. I'm saving some. Okay. <laughs> Don't feel weird about asking a question because you might be asking the question that someone else had and maybe they were too nervous to ask. So I always say, ask the questions. There are no ridiculous questions unless you're asking me about something completely different, you know, then, then I don't know. <laughs> the scan of cut, I know. All righty. So uh, let's get our fabric ready. So I have a piece of cotton material and I always like to save this one and show everyone of how many times I use a piece of material to cut out because the machine can, um, actually I'm gonna keep using this piece just, just to prove a point. Uh, the machine will do a, um, we'll scan it in. It's a scan in cut. She will scan the material in to show me, hey, this is the space that you still have available that you can cut out of this material. So back to the leather, if we were using leather, leather is expensive. I'm gonna use that to an inch of its life so I'm not wasting any of my money. So um, something I always recommend is rare, just to make sure it's nice and good on that mat. If your mat's losing stickiness, the brayer just helps it kind of stick on there a little bit better. It's like a steamroller. So I love my brayer. Alrighty, so let's take, look how holy, look how much I've used this guys. All right, so we're going to load this into our machine. I forget which camera it is. There, no, that's not the one I want. There it is. Okay, so we're going to use this button right here to load in our mat. And there she goes. Awesome. All righty. So, there we go. All right, so if we're happy with this, we don't want to edit it in any way, we're going to hit OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. So, we are going to come right here. If you see this is a little mat with a bar through it, I'm going to select that one because that's going to let me scan my mat to see what is on it. Now, if you're trying to fussy cut or say that you want a particular, uh, if you had a fabric that had flowers all over it and you wanted to make sure that a certain flower was on, on this bunny and it cut it out and he was a part of this, scanning in your material is going to be great because it's going to show you in color what's on your mat. So we see it right here. Well, if I was to take him and come to edit, object edit, and I rotate him, I can make sure I can fit him in anywhere and I can still keep using that material. How cool is that? Now, something that I always want to show people is if you come here to the directional keys, you can move him, but you can also zoom in up to 400%. So I can really make sure that I'm getting him where I want to get him. The ones right here are your directionals. So this one and this one are your directional. These right here move your image. So I'm going to make him come right here because I know that he will not catch on anything. Okay. 
And I made this joke in the class, but that's how close I am to losing it. Just kidding. All right. All right. I think that looks good. And I feel like a lot of people, if they were showing the machine, they would probably use a nice new piece of material. They would make sure that it was, you know, beautifully done. I like to do it the sloppy way <laughs> or just going for it because this is what's going to actually show you how the machine works. So now we've come here, we're going to please select. Do you want to cut? Do you want to draw? Do you want to foil? I want to cut. Beautiful. Now, if you look here, nothing is selected. Everything's kind of just funny because I haven't put my blade in there. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use my rotary blade because I like to see it. Plus, I want to show you guys how it jumps. So I'm just sl sliding it in here. If you ever feel any resistance right here where your holder is when you're locking it down, go ahead, take it out. Make sure there's nothing in there from a previous project. I know a lot of times if I'm doing crazy materials, I might get debris. And by crazy materials, I mean crazy materials. <laughs> so just check and make sure there's nothing in there. Slide her down and she should lock perfectly. All right. So let's go ahead. Wait, let's, there we go. Well, I'll do it from here. <laughs> and hit start. And there she goes. So if you notice, she's going to come over. If I switch the camera. Closer one to her. I'm just clicking all the buttons to see what happens. All right, she's coming down and she's going to start jumping because she's testing where is that best uh, angle? Where am I going to get that best cut? So this is the rotary blade. This is the new rotary blade. She's mm. my favorite. The pizza cutter. It's my favorite. <laughs> I know. Someone told me that. I was like, what? <laughs> they were like, yeah, it looks like a pizza. It was a man that told me that. I'm just going to call it on. For that. crafters who aren't familiar with sewing, maybe they not, are not familiar yeah. with the standard rotary cutter. And the, yeah. um, I guess the closest thing would be a cutter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's just a going. Um, yeah. question, do we have any questions while she's cutting? I have 26 questions. Where should I start? Um, Number four. <laughs> here's, a, here's one from Renee. Which blade should I use to cut felt and why? The rotary blade. Rotary yeah, blade. she's my specialty material. If it's something that I'm not sure about, I go to her automatically. Yeah. She's going to be the most delicate with my fabric, and she's going to think the most. <laughs> yeah. All right, Maggie Sue says, I did not have a PES design, so I stitched the outline with black thread, then scanned it in and was able to make my cut file with the scan for my embroidery design. Very cool, Maggie. That is so smart. I love that. That is awesome. <laughs> there She's was like, one question about scanning something in and maybe it didn't catch the full line. Mm -hmm. um, did you? Do you have a recommendation for that? Uh, lower your image. So, so you're saying that she had an image and she scanned it in and she feels like it didn't give her a great scan? Yeah, so it didn't complete the full circle. Lower your image. Okay, I'll show you how to do that. Let's switch cameras. Okay. Sorry, we're hopping around. Sorry, sorry. All righty. Um, we can get to that at the end, though. If you okay, if okay, you sorry. <laughs> we'll we'll <laughs> get back to that one. Okay. The reaction to me is just to answer. <laughs> All right, so let's unlock. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm going to take my fabric, and you should be using your uh, your scrape, your new blade. Take it off. Um. Okay. So there's our design right there, and what you should be doing is taking your spatula. You have different options. So you, this one came with your machine. It's just a little plastic spatula. Don't throw this out because it has good uses. But um, I personally I upgraded and got the kit that came with the little weeding tool. It looks like a little uh, dentist tool. I, I weed a lot of vinyl, so that made sense for me. So I'm going to use my metal one. And what you're going to do is you're going to come underneath the fabric and you're going to wiggle. Why do we want to do that? Well, because fabric frays. And if we didn't treat it, then it really could fray. So I like to be extra cautious whenever um, I'm taking my material off. And look how crisp that edge is. Wait, you know what? I'm going to prove a point. <laughs> look how crisp that edge is. That's I can do the awesome. far away camera, but why do it when I can do the up close camera? Like, how cool is that? So she's ready to go. So now whenever it's appliquing um, or we're doing our applique, I don't know if appliquing is a word. Um, so when it does that stitch out to show you where to put your material, well, just take this and I can put it right on there where it tells me to go. And now it's perfectly cut out. So now I don't have to take applique scissors. I have carpal tunnel. 
I don't, I don't mess with our Apple case scissors. So this has now done all of that for me and I'm not having to go in there and try to do it inside the machine or trying to move the hoop. And now it might not be aligned perfectly anymore. You just throw it on there and it's going to do that beautiful satin stitch for you around and then you're good to go. Well, if I stop letting it go in front of itself, you're good to go. So this now lets me do applique for Christmas. I wish I would have brought it. Um, for Christmas, I did an applique. It was a huge applique for my son. And it was a Christmas uh, wonderland. It was a train. So it had Santa and the train and all the parts of the train. It had presents and the elves and every bit of it was an applique. And before I would have been like, absolutely not. I'm not doing that because some of those presents were itty bitty on his little shirt. But I put it in my machine. It laid out all the pieces for me. And then I took my 12, uh, 12 by 24 mat. Uh, they don't make a 12 by 24 fabric, but they do a 12 by 24 standard. And I just put a high tax support sheet. Um, but I had it with different fabrics all over my mat. And then I dragged and dropped all of them, depending on what color I wanted them to be cut out in. I dragged and dropped all my images on there and I had it cut out every single bit of it. So then I took the mat over to my machine, my embroidery machine. And when I was ready for a particular little part, I would just take it off of my mat into my machine, let it stitch out. So I wasn't losing any pieces of my applique and I wasn't, um, I was just sitting there ready. So that's the nice part about it being sticky too, is you can just bring it over to your machine and it's kind of like a little bonus that it, it holds all your little pieces there. And then I was just ready, drag and dropping. And I think it really cut down the amount of time it would have taken me to do that applique because I would have had to go in there with the scissors during each one of them. And now I just had it nice and ready for me. So, and it, it comes out perfectly on the scan and cut. It's, it's just so, so professional. Um, yeah. Can you show us how, and I know this is awesome, and I know uh, maybe we could do like a little speed round of cutting mm -hmm. out a quilt block on the yeah, scan and cut with the um, yeah. seam allowance. That's yes. Really cool. <laughs> okay. So the seam allowance is cool. I, you can add seam allowance to anything. There are built-in quilt blocks in your machine. You know, I'm getting serious when I start doing this. Um, there are built-in quilt blocks in your machine already. And which is really cool. And I'll go ahead and show you those too, but you could bring in any of your designs at all. Um, I always tell the story of my friend who had her grandmother's um, patterns and they were doll patterns that she had collected from a long, long time. And she wanted to put those on her scan and cut so she could cut out the patterns and make a bunch of doll outfits for her daughter from these beautiful patterns. But I told her, don't put it on your sticky mat. <laughs> you can scan in with any of the mats. I told her to get the scanning mat because there's nothing sticky about this. It's just a slip in. So you put the pattern in there because you know pattern paper, it's flimsy scan it in that way and she saved all of those patterns onto her machine and she was able to add a seam allowance draw her seam allowance and cut it out but not affecting those patterns so you can bring any quilt design or pattern into your machine there are a ton of quilt uh, designs and uh images already in there but that was a cool one how to bring them in so sorry that just reminded me of that so let's switch cameras there we go all right so let's click like home okay Sorry, I was trying to look at the camera and do it. <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's go to patterns. We're going to come down one. Now, this is an uh, SDX330D, so Mickey Mouse is hanging out with us and all the princesses. So right here, these are your quilt blocks. So let's select one. Uh, let's go in there. I always have people who are like, what are you missing a lot? Click it. There are so many. <laughs> that was just one of them. So let's select this one right here. Okay. Now, this nine by nine is your finished block. You can tell it exactly what size you want your finished block to be. So if you're creating a quilt out of thin air or anything like that, you can tell it exactly what size you want it to be. You can lower it, higher it, whatever you want. So I'm gonna say, okay, that's how big I want my finished block. Now it's gonna lay out every single one of your pieces for you. So if I was to select this piece, okay, well, that's where it is on your finished block. And I can select this one. This is where it is on your finished block. That way I can kind of get my colors kind of situated in my head and I know where things are going to go. So I can hit OK. It's telling me, hey, you told me you wanted your finished block to be that certain size. This is how big this piece is going to be. And you're going to need two of them to finish your block. Now, if you notice right here, there's two lines. There's a black line and a blue line. That black line is your cut line. That blue line is your draw line. All of the quilt blocks that come into your machine or come with your machine already have the seam allowance um, 
draw or put on there, but you can always add in any of them that you want. Alrighty. So say we had these right here. I could change them. I could edit them. I could add additional blocks. So remember how I said before that I, um, I cut out many of them. I could put a piece of fabric here, cut these out, and then I could move and have other blocks right here, cut more fabric over there. And then that way I'm kind of uh, streamlining it. All right, I'm going to delete this out. What if I don't want that one? I only want this one. I could say, okay. And now I could tell it, hey, draw, cut, do whatever for me. Now, I like how I just like to press the buttons and see where it goes. Now, your machine can not only scan, it can cut, it can draw. Uh, with your machine, no matter what model you have, you are going to get this. This is your pen folder. It's very hard to open. Are you ready? <laughs> you just press the back of it. It's going to slot open it's super easy. Um, and you're going to get two pens with it. The, which, let me do the close-up camera because there we go. Let's do this one. So you have, you just press the back and it's going to pop open like this. And you get a blue pen and you get a purple pen. The blue pen is a water-soluble pen. The purple pen is an air-soluble pen. So for this, my fabric is blue, so I'm going to use the purple one. I'm just going to pop off the clear top, take my pen holder, drop it in there like that, and shut it. And then it goes in the same holder as my blade. So I would just slide it in like that. There we go. So let's take our fabric. There we go. Let's take our fabric like this, a regular piece of fabric, just like the one we had a minute ago. And I'm going to put it on my mat. I always tell people, make sure that you're putting it in different spots on your mat. Um, that way you're evenly wearing out your mat. Because, of course, the automatic response is to come put it in the corner at the top. So let's load in our mat. Okay. Oh, there we go. And we're going to come and hit OK. Please select. Well, we just put our draw and tool in there, so we want to draw. And it looks great. And we're going to hit start. There we go. Switch that one. There she goes. And she's done. <laughs> so we're going to take the drawing tool out. And we're going to, let's use this one just for funsies. We're going to put the cutting tool in. And then we're going to hit, there we go. We are going to hit finish. And we're going to do please select and cut. Why did we not want to select next part? Well, because it's asking you, do you want to go to the next part of your quilt block? So the other one or the other images. No, we want to finish this particular one. So remember, finish is to finish the block that we're on, the piece that we're on. Next part is to go to the next part of that block. So we're going to hit cut and we're going to make sure half cut is off because half cut is when we do vinyl and we're going to hit start. There we go. And there she goes. We're going to be good and drop things. And we're going to take her out of the little holder, the little pen, and we're going to put the clear pack back on because she is a marker and I don't want her to, uh, you know, wear out. Oh, you're done. <laughs> All right. So we're going to unload. Okay. And we're going to take our material off. Oh my gosh, she's got such a good cut. Look how beautiful that is. All right. And again, we're going to take our spatula. We're going to come underneath and we're going to wiggle. If I move my hand, you can see. We're going to wiggle underneath that. There she goes. I don't know if you can see it really well. Let me do it in the other camera. I love that I can switch cameras. They've given me power. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> wow, that's so nice. And look, she's already cut the little edges for me. So when I do my uh, my uh, block, I don't have bulky corners. She's already cut all those off for me. And you can add seam allowance to anything under the sun that comes into your machine. It does not have to just be a quilt block. Again, how my friend, she put in those uh, the patterns for um, from her grandmother. She added seam allowance to all of them. She went ahead and just added it so it was ready to go. This one I did right here. You might be able to see it a little bit better. Little bit better. This one I did with a black marker. <laughs> so you can see the seam allowance a little bit better on this material. Um, and this is the one that we just did. Oh, thank you, you, Courtney. I know, isn't that neat? I love it. Okay, I have tons of questions. You ready yeah, for lightning round? <laughs> Before we do our giveaway of the fabric map. All right, I'm gonna start from the beginning. 
score. Oh, here's just something, a comment. Everything embroidery market shows was so much fun. The All Brands booth was amazing. I even got to meet Becky Thompson from Power Tools with Thread. Yeah, Becky's awesome. Thanks, Angie. All right. Here's one from Carol. I've mm -hmm. cut fabric on my Cricut. Oof. Mm -hmm. Awful. Wasted so much fabric. Bought a scanning <laughs> <laughs> I try not to talk bad about the other machines. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I love the scan and cut. Okay, here's So Zola Marie. I have the SDX225 model, but confused on which mat to use and which way to put the fabric onto the mat with or without heat and bond. Do it with. Save yourself a step. Do it with fabric side down on your mat, heat and bond up. And reverse um, your design if it's has if it's not if it's directional like this one that we did a minute ago it wasn't directional it wasn't yeah. but this one that I cut a out name was, would be I pretty obvious remember. what if you cut it out upside down it's going to be backwards that's beautiful Courtney yeah so I cut out this really delicate rose and this design if you have a three thirty it's built in it's under the Disney this is a uh, Bell's rose from Beauty and the Beast I cut this mm -hmm. out and if I wanted the flower or the petal to face a certain way then I would have just flipped it so. Yeah, if you cool. watched the fabric video we did on All Brands After Hours, we cut that out. Yay. Oh, here, here we go. Uh, shameless plug. All Brands <laughs> After Hours. <laughs> All if brand you guys have a college, yeah. Courtney, uh, please do every weekend. And uh, yeah. let's see. All right. Here's one I'm not sure the answer of. Have you seen on Canvas or mm -hmm. in stock if we have Winnie the Pooh patterns? Uh, not I'd have sure. to look. I'm not sure. Usually they include Winnie the Pooh. I'm not sure if he, uh, like usually brother includes them on their machine, but I'm not sure about the scanning cut. Yeah. Bye. Bonnie says, <laughs> oh, you have the Disney. That's the one that I wanted to get. <laughs> That's what I she can. said. I um, like it because I, I not, you know, just to sell a Disney. Not, not so. But if uh, anyone wants Disney shirts and they want matching ones, is a lot of the questions I get. Um, she's built in. It's already there. I just, you can resize it at, do whatever you want to the image and it's already there. So it's easy to scan something in, but it is also nice to have every single one of the Disney princesses, which let me show you because I geek out. See, okay. I like how it's on the right camera. Hit home. Grab it all. <laughs> Here we go. Well, cool. I, I, I like it. I think it's neat. So you got well, Mickey Mouse. rhinestones too. Yeah. They give you um some rhinestones. So all of the characters. Oh, you know what's really cool is, let me see, there's so many stuff built in. These are little boxes. We did them on the show, too, that are little Halloween boxes that are Mickey Mouse, and they also have a mini one, which I thought was really neat. Um, and then they just have boxes that you can cut out of cardstock um, that have the different uh, little Mickey and Minis on there. So that's really cool. They also have these guys, and then all of your princesses are built in. And I think the rose was right here. It was Bell's rose that I cut out. So there's so much yeah. built in. Uh, the Disney ones, I think they're really cool. And a lot of times, like, that's a tiara. You cut that out. Yeah. And then you have a little tiara, which is cool. There's uh, necklaces and earrings that you can cut out, too. So, and then, of course, they have a whole section of Frozen. But I just think the images are neat, even if it's not Frozen. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's see. Oh, she's going to see if they have one of the Um, Cars. So if you have a little boy, I have four boys. So I don't get a lot of princesses, but these I've used quite a lot. Um, and then your rhinestone, these are drawing ones. They're one line drawing, which is really neat. So you could do a one line drawing of Minnie and Mickey. But yeah, these are the rhinestones. So it's a little bitty circle. So you can make yeah. a little rhinestone crown. So yeah, I like the Disney one. I think it's cool. There we go. Very cool. So, All right. So here's fun one from Judy. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. What setting for the blade? I'm so glad she asks because on this machine, you don't have to set the blade, right? There is Any no settings. There are, there are no numbers on this blade. She is an auto blade. So she goes and she tests how deep that material is and she will only cut through that material. Why is that helpful? Because I'm not cutting through my mat anymore. I used to be able to flip over my mat and it was duct tape city on the back of it because I was trying to, you know, tape it because I had cut through it so much. Now she's not going to cut through her, her mat which is saving you money because now you're not having to buy as many new mats. And it's also saving you money because you're not having to buy new blades as much because she's not cutting through that plastic mat as much. So it's saving your blades and your mat. So auto blade, 
you only have to tell it half cut or no half cut, and then it's good to go through any material. Cool. Jan asks, have you ever cut foam board? Yes. You yeah. have? I was yeah, like, I have. I'm not sure. So only, a, so remember three millimeters. If it's under that three millimeter, go for it. My son had a project that he had for school and we wanted to do like bubble letters at the top. So he had his little board, you know, those little boards that have the little wings. And we cut out the name of his project at the top of it at a foam board. So it was raised up um, and it was the only thing we had on hand. So we raised it up and think if we would have had to cut every single one of those letters, he would have he would have left me with that project and it would have become my project. But we did it that way and we could size it and we picked all the cool fonts we wanted to. And he ended up going back and um, he painted it. But I told him, I was like, if we had colored foam board, it could have just been whatever color. And he just went back and painted it, you know, over the top to be the color he wanted it to be because we just had a white foam board with us. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Michelle M. I love your hat. How do you treat the 12 by 24 mat to cut fabric? Um, it's going to be a high tax support sheet. Um, we sell them on our website, high tax support sheets, and you're, it comes in a roll. So I don't think I have any with me. That's what came out before the fabric mat was available. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like an extra piece of sticky, uh, very high tech, yeah. you know, very sticky sticker yeah. to put on top of so, your mat. So say this right here was the high tech support sheet. Um, it comes in a roll and there's multiples in that roll. So don't think it's just a one and done. Um, so it's multiple. And what you would do is you would take it, put it on your mat, your standard blue mat, and then you would make sure there was no bubbles and you would put it down on there. And then over time, it's going to get cut through and you're going to have to take your spatula. That's one really nice when the middle one comes in uh, evolved and you're going to have to pick it off later once it's just been really cut through and not sticky anymore. But uh, if that's if you're doing a 12 by 24. So you would use two of those sheets because those sheets come in a 12 by 12 cut. So two of those to make your standard into a fabric one. Um, if you have a 12 by 24 and you have an SDX, fabric mat, fabric mat. Do not do that on a 12 by 12. You have the fabric mat. It's just <laughs> if you want to do it on a 12 by 24. All right. Sue asks, which side of the cork faces down? Whichever. Um, whenever I did it, I... There's no, it's just, it's the same. It's not going to hurt the cork if you did it face down, but I was like, might as well do this side down so I can see my image and not have to flip it or worry about it. And if you want, I can cut out cork. Um, Sure, but I'm going to keep asking you questions because yeah, I am. Go for it. Now I'm just showing <laughs> off. Ask me questions. <laughs> Robin asks, will the machine take any PES and make it into an applique? Yes. As long as it's a PES format, you're good to go. Great. Yeah. Um, someone said earlier that they, oh, I think we answered that one or showed that mm -hmm. one on the screen. They, they stitched okay. it out and then scanned it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, let's see. Oh, Millie, great question and cute kitty. Do you recommend hanging the mats to store? I don't have a place to store them flat. Uh, it has, so brother used to be able to, and this is where I give them crud. Um, they used to have where you could scan in on both sides. Now it's one directional. So if you see the little arrow at the top, that's the side you're supposed to scan it in because they added the little hook where you could. So I see a lot of people do like a command strip on their wall so it doesn't hurt anything instead of a nail. And then they just hook it onto there. And then that way you're landing flat. You really don't want to roll up your mats or do anything like that. Like I, I, I went to a show and I had to roll it up a little bit and now it's sticking up. It still works, but you just want to try to prevent it from being yeah. rolled up. So yeah, I usually at least a command strip or something like that to put on your wall and just be able to hang them. Um, and um, in my studio, I have a uh, Alex door that's um, pretty wide and I just leave them in there. That's flat. Or I put them in my scan and cut bag. It's a rolling bag that has a little sleeve to put them in. I'll store them in one of those pots. And I think we sell a scan and cut mat um, case on our website. I believe yeah. I've seen it there. So Lauren, if you're listening, put that in the, in the category page, please. Okay. Yeah, um, Lauren keeps us running. We're like, Lauren. <laughs> it takes an army. Okay. So here's one from Roseanne and she was commenting earlier. She said a purple sheet came in her scanning cut box. Do you remember what that purple piece of paper? It's yeah, uh, I don't have the box near me. A purple piece of paper came with it. That's your first project. So on front, uh, 
I see if I have the box. <laughs> I'm like, usually I have a box. No, it's out there. Um, so if that's going to be your first project that it wants you to do. And it's making a 3D box. And we can always do that too if you want. Um, a 3D box out of a piece of paper because it wants you to get used to using your machine. So they give you that piece of paper to be like, hey, you've already got the materials to do your first project. Let's get it out and let's make something. And it walks you through the steps. There's a little booklet that should have been sitting at top, the top of it. And it walks you through how to do that. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Fran, I tried to scan a clip art and it didn't do very well. Uh, example, Spider-Man. How, mm -hmm. how would you suggest that she scan clip art? So um, when she scanned it in, it doesn't have to be black and white because a lot of people tell me, does the design have to be black and white? It does not need to be. So if you're scanning him and you're going to want to lower your sensitivity to the scan. So if you look, once you've scanned it in, there's going to be this white and black little bar kind of thing. Um, select that. It goes, it's a gradient. So select that and you can select to go down. So the lighter you tell that bar to go down, the, um, or is it the opposite? Sorry. <laughs> I think it's the, the lighter you tell it to go down, the less sensitive it is. And then the higher it's the more sensitive it is. So you can tell it to go down less sensitive and it should catch more for you. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't ever mess with that bar, but mess with that. And then it should be able to catch the rest of your image. I think someone asked a question earlier. They were saying that it didn't catch everything. Lower the sensitivity of your, um, of your scan and it should catch more. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Connie is asking, this is a little trick question. Can I do that with my Apple iPad? So there's a program called Canvas Workspace. That's a web-based program that you can on your account create and edit designs mm -hmm. through the URL, www.canvasworkspace. So there's two. There is yeah. the website Canvas and there's the app Canvas. They're a little different. It's, it's kind of personal preference. I use both. Mm -hmm. um, and we've done a video on Canvas uh, on our YouTube uh, page. We've done two, actually, um, going through the differences and going through them. Um, it's personal preference, which one you like better. They both are really great at editing. And it's the free software that Brother gives you with your scan and cut. Because I've heard a lot of crazy things, especially at this last show. People were telling me horror stories about having to pay subscription fees per month for their cutting, uh, what? They were like, mm -hmm. yeah, I had to buy the software separately. I have to, da, 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 da. and then some, a lot of cutting machines don't even have the, this is where I start ranting, um, <laughs> don't even have a built-in editing screen. So they have to do it on the software. Brother mm -hmm. does not do that. Brother Canvas is there if you wanna use it, but you don't have to because it's an all-in-one machine. She is a hundred percent capable on her own. You don't even have to have the internet to use her. Um, yeah. She's 100% on her own, but they give you Canvas, that free software, if you want to use it. They don't want to limit you, which I, I appreciate. So you have that option <laughs> to do Canvas. You don't have to, but if you want to, it's this screen, but bigger. So that yeah. way you can edit. So if you're at work and your machine is not nearby and you want to edit something, you just go and brother Canvas real fast, edit mm -hmm. it on there. You didn't hear that. I know our owner's watching. I saw them in the comments. <laughs> but you could do that. And then when you get home, put it into your machine wirelessly or through the USB and you have your design. Very cool. Okay. I'll let you put that mat in so that you can okay. put this real quick. I mean, some uh, cork real quick. All right. So cork right here. Look how pretty that cork is. I know during Christmas, my friends, uh, we wanted to do like a woodland tree for her and we cut out ornaments, like uh, different shapes, like the, we did a couple of these four leaves and different, all sorts of different Christmas shapes and had the machine cut out a little circle at the top for our, um, for the hook. And we put them all over her, uh, her tree. It was beautiful. So we're going to load in our cork. I know everyone's like, Courtney, how do you know to do that? Because I have tried so many things on this scan and cut. I always have a story for something because I've usually done it. All right. So let's switch. Let's see. There we go. All righty. So let's, oh, you know what? We've got Mickey Mouse here. Let's use him. Uh, I want to cut out. Let's see. Oh, let's cut out this little Mickey. He's so cute. Okay. Very nice. I know. Now I could scan my material in, but I know I've got a big piece of material, so I'm not too worried about it. But I could drag and drop this wherever I want it to on the mat. So I'm put it here. 
and we're going to say OK. Oh, actually, let's go to edit, object edit. And now we can show you could resize. You could add additional Mickeys if I wanted more of him. I could flip him, rotate him, anything like that. And the nice thing about the rotation is you can do 90, 10, or 1. Why is that a big deal? Because I can now edit him 1% at a time, which is really, really cool. Especially if I was adding a name and I wanted that name to go inside of his ear. Like say I wanted an A to be cut out of his ear. Then I could put the A there and then rotate it to wherever I want it. If I didn't want it up and down, if I wanted to, to shift it over a little bit, I could. You could add seam allowance to him. Now, our block that we had done earlier already had seam allowance, but if I wanted to add it to him, I could do it there. We could flip. Remember how we were talking? Well, he's non-directional, but if we wanted to flip, we just select that button right there, and it automatically will flip it for us. So I'm going to unflip. Um, add an additional line. If you feel like it didn't catch a line, you, I'm sorry, if you wanted to do a fill stitch, I just flipped the wrong thing. You could add a fill stitch. So if you were drawing, if you have my design center, you're kind of familiar with this concept, you could draw on the side of it. Alrighty. This is where you could add an additional line. You could offset cut, add a perforated line, and a bunch of really, really cool stuff. All right. So we're okay. We're going to hit okay. Okay. Again, please select and we want to cut. I'm going to go ahead and use this blade right here because I consider this a specialty fabric. And that's the here. rotary blade. Yep, that rotary blade. All righty. So she is locked and loaded in there. And we're going to hit start. There she goes. So Lord. right now, right here is where it, it measures the depth of the fabric so that you don't have to set the blade depth. On the material. See how she's going down and she went down for a few seconds longer. It's because of the thicker material. And there she goes. All right. While it's cutting, Courtney, yeah. we have a question. Uh, what are those two levers on the side of the machine? One and two. Here? Yeah. One and two. Okay. So she can do a three millimeter thickness, which is the thickest material that a cutting machine can currently cut. And yes, I gloat about it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it too. Yeah. So currently I already had her set to a two because I did a thicker material earlier um, before the show because I'm constantly in playing with my machine. So it's already set to a two, but it will tell you, hey, you need to raise that bar or lower that bar. There is an internal bar inside of your machine that you can raise or lower by the flick. So it's got a one and a two and you could tell it where to go. Um, if you're doing a thick material, it's going to tell you to go up to a two. If you're not doing a thick material, go ahead and push it down to the one. But it'll tell you when to do it and not to do it. It would have told me this if I had had it at a one. It would have stopped me and said, hey, can you flip that bar? I would have flipped it and it would have been good to go. Very no cool. <laughs> All right, Maggie Sue, how do you cut fleece? Um, so fabric mat, so your tan mat and with that rotary blade. You're just yeah. going to put your fleece on there. Uh, make sure it's nice and on there. That's when I recommend brayer tools for the wind. It's like a steamroller. It's going to make sure it's stuck on there and you're good to go. So, but when you're taking that fleece off, use your spatula because, you know, fleece can pull and distort whenever, um, you know, anytime, let's be honest, but especially after it's cut, just make sure you go in there with your spatula, wiggle, 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 and then get it off of your mat. Cause that's a really sticky mat. So you don't want it to pull or distort. So, Wiggle, 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 get it off of there and it should work fine. Okay, cool. I love it. <laughs> uh, we have a request from someone. If you could do one of your shows on making cards and adding rhinestones to yes, the card. I will totally add that to the list. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, this is so sweet. But Robin, Robin said, I've had my cutter for years and not used it much. Found it. Too frustrating. You ladies are making the cutter sound easy. LOL, LOL, LOL. Very, very easy. Back when I started with, I think it's been eight years now, with the scan and cut, there wasn't much information out there at all. And so I took it home and I played with it and played it. Actually, first I, I, I was like, asked my mother-in-law, like, you heard about that scan and cut? You should get one and let me borrow it. Um, <laughs> and so she did. I took it home and I played with it and I played with it and I didn't hurt it. I didn't damage it. I just played and learned and learned and learned to the point now, whenever I see a natural brother educator like Cindy Hogan, I'm like, okay, check me like this and this. And she's like, yes, Courtney. Yes, Courtney. That, that's how you do it. And I'm like, okay, because it, it's so easy. So I know it's intimidating when you get it home, take it out of the box, play with it. 
play with it. It's so much fun. And you're just, you're going to find the things that you love to do on it and keep doing more and more and more. Yeah. And watch one of Courtney's after hours videos and just follow along and you can pause it and, you know, do it step by step with her along the way. And those are yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Um, and we've done a video called 10 things that I wish someone would have told me when I started with my scanning cut. And that is one of the most views videos because people are like, wait, I'm new to this. I, I, they always call themselves newbies in the comments. They're like, I'm a newbie. Like, tell me the things that way you don't have to do the errors that I've did. And then, oh, she's done now. I'm already talking loud. Um, you don't have to do the errors I did. I'm letting you skip right over that. I'm telling you those tips and tricks. And then that way you're jumping in it with already knowledge. You're already ready to go. So, this is cool. This is so cool. All righty. So, ah, I did the rotary blade. She's a thick material. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to reload her and I'm going to run her again. Remember what we said? You might need to run it again with the rotary blade. She's okay, a thick cool. material, so we're going to load her in again. Please select. We're going to hit cut, and she's going to cut exactly where she cut. Sorry. Okay. 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 Darcy asks, um, as a newbie, what do you mean by paper vinyl fabric? Okay. So it's the mats. So you've got, let's start with this one. This is your scan mat. There's nothing sticky about her. She is just a flap and you would put paper in there. So say, ah, this is a good example. So say you had this paper right here. This is just an image I typed in Easter Bunny. She came up. So you would just print it off regular computer paper, nothing special about her, put her in, scan her into your machine, and she's automatically going to change that into a cut file. So then you could take a um, mat like this, the purple one, put your vinyl on there and cut it out. And then you could make a template out of vinyl. So you could do things like wood burning. If you haven't seen the show, we did a show. On the show, we did this. We cut out a template and used a torch pin to look like this, a torch pin to color it in and then took the vinyl off and we heated it up with a heat gun and burned it into the wood. That's burned into the wood. It was very, very cool. So um, that's that's what I do for that. But so standard, I usually mostly use for vinyl. Um, that's what we said vinyl because we mostly use that one, but it's the purple standard mat. You also have your low tack mat, which I would use to cut out cardstock or any kind of paper. If you don't have a scanning mat, you can use your low tack mat to scan with and put the paper directly to here and scan in with it. Um, I wouldn't do it on any of the other mats other than these two because I don't want to put paper to my standard or my fabric mat because it's going to get stuck on there and then I'm going to be peeling off paper and it's going to be a mess. So uh, that's those mats. And then we have our fabric mat that's currently in there um, that I mostly just use for fabric. So Very cool. Thank you. Okay, uh, glitter cardstock. Uh, what do you use for glitter cardstock? Your uh, low tack mat. So any kind of paper, low tack mat, your blue one. Mm -hmm. Do they use the standard? And then blue? use your black auto blade. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a very good question. Jan mm -hmm. asks, what advantages, what is the advantage of a scan and cut like you have over the SDX 225? So the 225 is a previous model. Um, then the 330 or the 325, that's the newest model. Um, it's got more built-in designs. It's got gosh. the fabric mat and the rotary blade. <laughs> well, because uh, yeah, the 330, the rotary blade's in there. I just looked for it. I was like, where'd you, you go? Can, you can you purchase the rotary blade. You buy it separately in a kit. Yeah. It's automatically going to come with it. Um, so I know one. Fabric mat, which before they used to not throw the fabric mat in, which is one of the best mats because it is the most sticky mat. So even if you're like, I'm not going to do a lot of fabric, it's still the most sticky mat. I want to have that at my disposal if I need to use it for anything. Yeah. Um, so I, I like that. But I mean, there's it's just a really good machine. <laughs> That's why I like my it. connection feature is one oh, of the yeah, biggest. My so basically, the you, if you have a Luminaire or a Stellaire, and hopefully more models in the future, but it's models that have, um, since they have My Design Center and wireless connectivity, um, yeah. 
the mach the embroidery machine can talk to the scan and cut and the scan and cut can talk back to the embroidery so machine wirelessly. Think of it how you said we could take a PES, put it into the machine and it will turn it into a cut file. Um, it can now go the other way. It will take that cut file, make it into a PES. So you have a stitch out for your applicators and different things like that. So now you really could make any design into an applique, which is really, yeah. really cool. And I both of those machines scan and embroider using my design center, which is yeah. so cool. So, cool. Question, question. I love questions. Okay. <laughs> Here's one from Shirley. And uh, I've been there with the old scan and cut that had the manual blade. Me I went too. To the store for the first time when we first got the original models. I was like, I'm going to do my name. And I didn't set the blade correctly. And I literally cut my name into the floor <laughs> models, Matt. And the, all, the, all the retail people knew who it was because yeah. my name was on it. Yeah. Uh, so can you use duct tape on the back to keep it together? I probably wouldn't recommend that right i did with the cmr when you cut through just duct tape on the back but now that we have the sdx there's no more of that so you're good yeah. okay mm -hmm. all right that's why it's after hours <laughs> i'm sure if you ask brother uh engineers they would say no <laughs> yeah okay um if we don't have the rotary blade, which blade should we use? Uh, if you're doing fabric, the tan blade. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gold blade, gold bat fabric. Yes. 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 Uh, a blue mat paper. That's mm -hmm. the low tech mat. Mm -hmm. Black mat. No, is it black or purple? It's purple. Purple mat vinyl. And mm -hmm. then there's two different kind of vinyls. One of them you put face down and the other one you put face I like how up. I'm staying quiet because like we're quizzing her. We're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> you put one face down and one face up depending on if it's uh, uh, HTV or um, the sticker back style. PSV, yeah. Yeah. It, yes. <laughs> and I, I would have to look it up each time I did it to make sure. It's um, the one that you weed from the back is the one that's heat. Yes, right. yes, I love it. Yes. <laughs> you weed out the back. Um, and then that that clear piece is like the transfer. Which yes, is. yes, wonderful. <laughs> that is all right. So if you guys awesome. haven't yet, please go ahead and comment hashtag all brands because we're gonna be doing a giveaway for a scan and cut mat very soon. Which is the fabric one, right? Yes. Yes. So that is awesome. I want that. <laughs> okay. Dorothy's cutting. We need to do one together, Courtney, on cutting vinyl, I think, next, oh. since today yeah. was cutting fabric. Dorothy mm -hmm. asks, I've had trouble cutting holographic vinyl. Is there a different setting I should use? No. Uh, what's it doing? Um, so with that one... It shouldn't give you any kind of issue as long as you're using the black, there we go, the black oh. auto blade. If you're doing a lot of vinyl, there is a vinyl kit that has a light blue blade um, that I always recommend because it gives a really nice cut. But if you're not doing a ton of vinyl, the black one does it great. If with an auto blade, it should just automatically go through it, no issue. Um, put it on your standard mat to make sure it's being stayed still or make sure that it's holding still. Um, and then your black auto blade, you should be good to go. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just weeding out Mickey, Mickey space over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's at the dentist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, oh, here's one from Lois. I haven't personally used the embossing kit. But you know what's funny, Courtney? I'm going down a little rabbit hole. When The first time I got my scan and cut, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now I have my scan and cut. I know it can do all of these things. So yeah. I have to buy all of the things yeah. just in case I use them. And then there was like this huge barrier of like, what should I do to get started? Just yeah. buy the thing for one thing to get started. Mm -hmm. Say, okay, I'm going to cut out a quilt. You know, even though I know it cuts vinyl, I know it does scrapbooking. I know it does all the things, but just like to get started, hone in on one yeah. project. Um, yeah, I usually say... 
because a lot of times people will ask me, okay, Courtney, I got my scan and cut. What kit do I need to buy? And again, I know our owner is watching and he doesn't like when I say this, but you don't need any of them. You need to learn your machine. You need to figure it out. Now, once you've learned your machine and you're comfortable with your machine, you okay. Well, then you could be like, you know what? I want to add rhinestones to things. Well, then the rhinestone kits for you. Oh, you know what? I want to add foil to my Christmas cards. Well, then they'll get the foil kit for you. Oh, I'm doing a lot of vinyl. We'll get the uh, the vinyl kit, the vinyl blade kit. Um, it's preference to what you want to do. That's the great thing about Scan and Cut is you could really look and be like, oh, I want to do calligraphy. There's a kit. I want to do rhinestone. There's a kit. Oh, I want to do embossing. There's. I know I bought another brand's kits for stamps. And I was like, I haven't used it yet. Maybe. But anyway, okay, <laughs> the embossing kit. Yes. Um, is that used for paper or can you use it on fabric? Uh, I've only done it with paper. I don't see why you can't do it with fabric. Um, I haven't personally done it, but usually I always say, try it once, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to hurt anything. You'll be fine. So go ahead, try <laughs> it again, see what happens and you know, go from there. But I, I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. All right. So Susan asks, I'm having trouble finding free SVGs to cut. Uh -huh. Where do I find them? They, well, that's the thing is we have a scan and cut. Everything's free. <laughs> that yeah. sounds bad. But it is. You're making a cut file, right? Yeah. You really could type anything under the sun. You could type in happy Easter and get a happy Easter one, cut it out. Um, that there's, and you can edit. So if I didn't want this bunny on here, I could just edit him out center happy and I'm good. Um, I mean, anything really, I mean, anything's a free SVG because we can scan it in. That yeah. sounds bad. Or bring I mean, it in. Mean, mean, that sounds bad. <laughs> well, you, can bring, you can bring images in the Canvas workspace, right? Yeah, you can. Yeah. And it, uh, so you could go to Canvas workspace and we did this on the show too. Um, and type in anything. So if I saw bunny, I could type in bunny, all these images that were a bunny, I could save it to my computer, you know, just right click, save the image and then go into canvas, go get the image. Um, and then yeah. it automatically return it into a cut file in canvas. So you don't even have to scan yeah. it in you can go straight to canvas. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Oh, are you done with Mickey? I am. I left them on the mat so you can see them a little bit better. Very cute. And I love that he's on this like glittery cork. Don't judge how dirty my mat is. This is a judgment free zone. No judging my mat. I use it, okay? <laughs> how cool is that? I left him on there. That way you can see him a little bit better because he's got little, little pieces. I love it. All right, everybody. We're going to do a giveaway for the scan and cut. I mean, the uh, scan and cut fabric mat. Not a scan and cut. Oh, oh, everything in the market. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to draw for a winner. Drum roll, please. And if you don't own a scan and cut, then I'll give you a gift card for the uh, for the value of it. And our winner is Eileen. Eileen Bloom. Congratulations. A name for spring. Oh, my goodness. So, Eileen, please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, and address um, to claim your fabric mat. And if you don't have a span and cut, let me know and I'll send you a gift card. Congratulations. Thank you, Courtney. You're awesome. No. You're amazing. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you. You so, really are. Um, before I go again, if you want to, I saw someone be like, where did we find the show? It's on YouTube, All Brands After Hours. Uh, it usually comes out at uh, 8 o'clock Saturday nights. Um, but it saves it onto our YouTube channel. So if you don't watch it at that time, you can always come back to watch it. It's a great reference. We go over Scan and Cut 101, Scan and Cut 102. All right, I got a box now. What? These are what the buttons mean. And it saves it. So then that way, if you ever want to reference it later, what did she say this button was? It's on there. We've done fabric, vinyl. We've done pressure sensitive vinyl and made this giant treat board for Santa where he could put his cookies in milk and all that. And we even added our name and I did this on the show start to finish. So it is project based. Usually there are some instructional videos, but it is a uh, project based. That way you see a project being done. You see the buttons being clicked um, and you know how to do it from start to finish. So. Ah. All right. Well, I hope you come on the show again really soon and we can do vinyl next time. Uh, whatever we all want. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone. We'll see you next Thursday and we'll be with Becky Thompson from Tower Power Tools with Thread. And she'll be doing edge-to-edge -edge quilting in the hoop. So see you next Thursday.
All right. Bye.